So the key thing I thought about when I systemize or framework this idea of how do you get unusual results is pretty simple. In order to obtain unusual results, you either have to do unusual things or the usual things in an unusual way. Now, the corollary of that is almost a tautology. If you just do the usual things in the usual way, you'll get the usual results. The usual results are usually terrible. So I couldn't see in the context of, of at least building products why that was a, 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 an approach that most people would want to take. If you visually think about this, it sort of breaks down to this, right? You can get unusual results in all of the outer quadrants. It's only the lower left quadrants where you're doing the usual things in the usual way that you oftentimes get the usual results. Now coming from an, the entrepreneurial world, failure is the norm. It always struck me that you wanna do everything you can to break out of that lower left quadrant, which is something I think is very, very interesting to contemplate because a lot of people, many people live their lives, entire lives in the lower left quadrant, right? One of the things I constantly remind myself, both as a PM, as an entrepreneur, day to day is, whenever I find myself in the lower left quadrant for too long, to be cognizant that I'm stagnating. To constantly think of either, can I do unusual things for my product, for my team, for myself? Or can I do things that are usual, but in a different way, to break out of this thesis and stagnation that you otherwise would fall into?